Welcome to a behind the scenes look of horse racing. I'm Jonathan Horowitz, the announcer at Arapaho Park. Horse racing has a language unto itself, and horse racing has also influenced language beyond the track. On this episode of Gates Open at Arapaho Park, we'll be a little bit like Sesame Street and teach you some new words you'll hear when you go to the races. And we'll be a little bit like Jeopardy and explain how certain common expressions have their origins in horse racing. Some of the language that's unique to horse racing, furlong, an agricultural term by which distances of horse races are measured in increments of an eighth of a mile. Six furlongs, six eighths or three quarters of a mile. You can equate a furlong to a city block because when Chicago was designing its street layout, city planners fit eight blocks in a mile. So a six furlong race would be like running six blocks. The racetrack is filled with colored poles to designate each furlong. Two furlongs or a quarter of a mile is the quarter pole. Four furlongs the half mile pole. In order for a six furlong race at Arapaho or any other one mile oval not to start on the turn, the course is extended with a chute where the race begins. When it comes to betting, there are straight bets. Win, place, top two, and show, top three. So what do you do when someone says, as in the Oscar winning movie, The Sting with Robert Redford and Paul Newman, to place it on Lucky Dan. And there's exotic bets. Exacta, first two in a row. Trifecta, first three in a row. Superfecta, first four in a row. In horse racing's paramutual system of wagering, odds can change based on how much money is bet. But before the day's races, the track's handicapper tries to predict the odds with a morning line. Now on to some terms that you may already know, but may not know that they were inspired by horse racing. When you start anything, you get out of the gate, derive how horses will stand still in the starting gate, and when the gates spring open, the horse race, or the life race, is underway. And when you're finishing, you're in the home stretch. Like in a horse race, the finish line is in sight. While it's happening, you may have the inside track, an edge, because like in horse racing, being on the inside saves ground. If you're in contention, you're in the running a term now applied to elections, promotions, or dating. But if you're not in contention, you may need to pick up the pace, like in a race that isn't going as planned. You think you have something to show? Then you're chomping at the bit, derived from an eager horse pulling his jockey while wanting to do more. If you're expected to succeed, well, then you're a favorite. People have their eyes on you and expect you or that blockbuster with Oscar aspirations or that presidential candidate to come through. But if you're dismissed, you're a long shot or dark horse with big odds and a surprise when it comes through. Favorites, long shots, or dark horses, nothing is given and that's why they run the race. When something gets close to the finish, it's down to the wire. Racetracks used to stretch a wire across the finish line to alert fans and jockeys. If you're pulling away, you win hands down, like how jockeys hold their reins when their horse has the race wrapped up. If you have no hope, there's no sense in beating a dead horse. If it's close, there may be a photo finish requiring further examination. If it's too close to call, it may be a dead heat, a term originating in horse racing in the 18th century because a tie in a race or heat meant nothing was decided. Of course, you could always flip a coin, kind of like what took place in 1780 in England between Edward Stanley and Charles Bunbury. It's arguably the most significant coin flip of all time. Stanley won the coin flip and for it, he got to name a brand new race for three-year-old horses. You see, Edward Stanley was the 12th Earl of Derby and so the race became known as the Derby, a mile and a half on an undulating turf course at Epsom Downs that is still held in England each June. Now nearly every country, every state has a race for three-year-old horses with Derby or Derby as Americans pronounce it in its name. The most famous of these races in the United States, and the most famous of all American horse races, is the Kentucky Derby at Churchill Downs in Louisville, the first leg of the Triple Crown. The female equivalent of the Derby for three-year-old fillies is called the Oaks, also the name of the Earl of Derby's estate. Like the Derby, there are also Oaks races around the world, such as the Kentucky Oaks, Irish Oaks, and American Oaks. Lord Derby will live on in posterity, much like the Earl of Sandwich for his culinary creation of putting food between two pieces of bread and eating it with his hands. 
had the famous coin flip gone the other way, Member of Parliament and horse owner Sir Charles Bunbury may have inspired the Kentucky Bunbury. Derby has become associated with other racing competitions not involving horses, such as the Soapbox Derby. A derby can also refer to a general sports competition, such as the Home Run Derby before baseball's All-Star Game, or a soccer match between two local rivals in a city. And clothing, because when American spectators saw the hats that English fans wore to the derby, Derby became an American term for bowler. So give some thought to the next time you have to choose between heads or tails because a lot can be at stake in a coin flip. And the next time you're in a board meeting or on a date because you may be speaking the language of horse racing.